Good day and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. In today's coverage of the ongoing civil war taking place inside of the former state of Ethiopia, we have continued uh, intelligence reports coming in on the uh, battlefield situation on the ground. And uh, yes, uh, as you can see, you can see the green dots, you can see the red dots, and you can see the yellow dots. The green dots are areas controlled by the Tigrayan Defense Forces. The red dots are areas controlled by the Amhara Regional Militias and the Ethiopian National Defense Forces. And uh, also the uh, yellow dots, which would indicate operational areas of the Oromo Liberation Army. And, and as we have mentioned before, there are also other areas where there are groups uh, fighting against the Prosperity Party and the central government, uh, the, uh, the, the, the warlord, uh, as of right now, Abiy Ahmed. And again, you can define him as that, as... Uh, uh, he is uh, taking more of a, a direct interest uh, in the uh, the ongoing military conflict. But first, what is going on uh, on the ground? And uh, obviously, we have received reports, and uh, in within the confines uh, of the uh, public mainstream media domain, it is being reported that uh, the Ethiopian National Defense Forces. Uh, the B loyalists and the Amhara regional militia units have, in fact, entered Dese and Kombolcha. Uh, again, uh, if we uh, if we look back uh, at where we were just uh, a half a year ago, in which we saw the entire uh, uh, Tigray region being occupied by the forces of the uh, despotic regime of uh, Eritrea. And then obviously the the army of uh, the uh, the regime of Abiy Ahmed uh, that had entered the Tigray region and occupied much of it and, and, and was then since uh, driven out. Uh, I don't even think at that point when the uh, Tigrayan defense forces were operating in the Tiembian region uh, just to the west of Makele and south of Aksum and Attawa, we would be in a position where we would have seen uh, the all of the Tigray region retaken by the Tigrayan defense forces, and then a, a, a an invasion of uh, Ethiopia proper, of the Amhara region, of the Afar region, and significant gains in which we saw Dese and Kambolcha and areas even further south uh, seized by the Tigrayan defense forces. So obviously, it uh, it was something that, uh, in terms of a military analytical viewpoint. Uh, I uh, did not even believe uh, would be uh, possible uh, in terms of being able to seize Dese and Kambolcha uh, so rapidly. Now, uh, if we look at the progress of the war uh, south of Dese and Kambolcha as the Tigrayan Defense Forces had continued to advance, uh, the, uh, the, the major uh, intervening fact that uh, changed the dynamic on the ground was the uh, military alliance that was created, the military agreement that was created in October with uh, Turkey. And obviously, once that agreement was established, we started to see a, 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 a uptick in Turkish military deliveries to include uh, what we now believe are operational squadrons of TB2 drones and munitions that have continued to be flown into uh, Addis Ababa and other parts of uh, the former state of uh, Ethiopia, which is now led by the warlord Abiy Ahmed. Uh, but again, in all probability, without the intervention of Turkish forces, without the, the intervention of additional uh, People's Republic of China military assets, uh, equipment being uh, flown in and delivered uh, to uh, the uh, the B loyalists without the deployment of further assets of Emirati forces uh, helping the uh, Ethiopian National Defense Forces, the B Ahmed regime, uh, deploy the Wing Loon drone. Uh, we would probably be looking at right now uh, at uh, Tigrayan Defense Forces uh, entering uh, Addis Ababa, but uh, there was an intervention. And uh, the uh, the forces 
of uh, the Republic of Turkey, uh, the United Arab Emirates, uh, even elements of, uh, of, of Iranian drones were introduced into the equation. And obviously that stifled the advance of the Tigrayan Defense Forces. So whereas we were seeing a, 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 a 90 percent uh, conventional conflict, again, it, it, trans, it transformed itself from a, uh, a, an industrial strength insurgency uh, inside of the Tigray region as the uh, Tigrayans fought to liberate the Tigray region uh, into more of a conventional attack by the Tigrayan Defense Forces. So the, they, they evolved into this uh, conventional army which was able to drive uh, 160 miles south 170 miles south into the Amhara region, see these major cities, major towns. They still are in control of uh, many towns and cities inside of the Amhara region. Now, will that continue? Again, uh, we just don't know at this point. But we're starting to see the conflict uh, transform itself, uh, again, from one that was a conventional conflict, and we're going to continue to see elements of a conventional conflict, but at the same time, we are also going to see a asymmetrical insurgency uh, because of the use of these drones and these other assets that have been given to the uh, the AB loyalists, and uh, we know, and we're, we're fairly certain right now, there are indeed Turkish forces, Turkish special operation forces, and Turkish contractors that operate some of these drones on the ground right now uh, at the major air base just to the southeast of uh, Addis Ababa. And again, it would appear that uh, the Tigrayan Defense Forces, because of the use of these high-tech drones, and again, we've seen other militaries around the world be challenged by these systems. Um, again, we, we, we saw that uh, in the Azeri-Armenian conflict over Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, again, the, the, the Turks uh, raised their head there and supported the, uh, the Azeri regime as it, uh, as it reconquered uh, many parts of Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, we have seen Turkish forces being introduced uh, into Libya, where they have uh, intervened on that conflict as well. So again, uh, we have seen the Turks operate uh, really all across uh, the Mideast and North Africa, uh, in in a uh, in a method to uh, continue to establish uh, its uh, uh, what it perceives itself as a regional power, and again I would assume that uh, resource based agreements uh, have been um, arranged between uh, the B loyalist and Turkey and the United Arab Emirates and uh, obviously possibly the People's Republic. Of China. So again, you can see the gravitational pull of, of, of the of B regime towards uh, these uh, semi democratic or, author or strictly authoritarian uh, regimes such as Eritrea and away from traditional Western democracies. And unfortunately, for a lot of people who, re who reside uh, inside of, uh, of Addis Ababa and uh, are loyal to the uh, prosperity party of, of Abiy Ahmed and, and Abiy Ahmed himself. Uh, I, I think a lot of, of those folks don't remember what it was like when there was not Western, uh, uh, an, a, a influx of Western cash and business ventures into uh, Ethiopia. And again, we're starting to see that pivot back towards some of these authoritarian regimes, such as the People's Republic of China, uh, even the United Arab Emirates. Again, uh, the real vested interest in Ethiopia is not that for those regimes. It is something else. And eventually, unfortunately, as this conflict continues, uh, as Western uh, investment leaves the country, uh, unfortunately, we will probably see uh, renewed famine, renewed strife, uh, renewed uh, serious, serious difficulties that many of the people that are now living in Addis Ababa uh, that are in their 20s and 30s uh, probably just don't remember or were not born uh, during the times when the Soviets were supporting uh, the uh, Derg regime or the uh, coordination committee, the military coordination committee regime that was in power uh, during the late 70s all the way up until uh, 1990. And again, 
that would seem to be uh, the, uh, the now back to that sort of uh, governance, that sort of, uh, of, of really serious uh, famine and uh, economic downturn. Uh, and again, uh, that is going to be part of the ongoing war strategy of the Tigrayan region uh, as this turns into more of an asymmetrical conflict. Again, the idea that this is just going to suddenly end uh, is really uh, nonsensical. And unfortunately for many people living in the region, uh, war and strife is going to continue. You still have a very robust uh, Romo Liberation Army, very, very much active in the Aromia region. You still have a tremendously powerful uh, Tigrayan defense forces still operating in many parts of the Amhara region and uh, ha has secured uh, almost all with the exception of Western Tigray. So again, uh, these forces that are opposition to uh, the Abi regime and uh, its unitary one-party uh, government supported by the despotic regime of Eritrea uh, is going to continue. And the fighting is going to continue. The civil war is going to continue. The lack of foreign investment is going to rotate out of Ethiopia. Uh, and uh, you will continue to see uh, strife uh, increase uh, st st steadily. And unfortunately, we're probably looking at something that was very similar to pre-1990, unfortunately. So then the question is, is, is what does the Tigray region do? I think the social contract uh, in terms of uh, Tigray living with uh, uh, Abiy Ahmed, the Prosperity Party, and uh, factions within the Amhara region uh, have been broken. And ultimately, we'll probably see uh, the uh, Tigrayan region attempt a, a move towards independence. And uh, at the same time, we will probably continue to see the uh, Oromia region as well uh, vie for its autonomy and or independence, and the civil war will simply go on. Now, from a military viewpoint, we have received additional uh, intelligence on uh, current losses. Now, uh, obviously, uh, the losses on both sides have been tremendous, but we have received uh, internal intelligence uh, from the, uh, the Abi loyalist side, which now indicates that the uh, Ethiopian National Defense Forces uh, and uh, the Amhara regional allies uh, have suffered in excess of 100,000 killed or seriously wounded. And in fact, many of those uh, seriously wounded uh, have since uh, perished. One of the reasons is, is, is lack of uh, battlefield uh, medical capability. So again, uh, that lack of preparation in terms of having the ability to treat battlefield casualties has led to additional post uh, battlefield woundings to to incur uh, additional deaths, un unfortunately. And again, it would appear that uh, almost half of the existing Ethiopian National Defense Forces uh, prior that existed prior to the conflict uh, have been killed or wounded. So again, 50 to 60 percent of the existing Ethiopian National Defense Forces that existed prior to operations that started in late 2020 uh, are now uh, no longer uh, operational. Again, 50%, 60% casualty rate for the entire Ethiopian National Defense Forces. And again, 100,000 casualties as of right now. So again, uh, a very, very tremendous blow. And, and, and again, as the, uh, the Tigrayan Defense Forces were proceeding south of Convulsion, south of Deshe, uh, that is when we understand uh, Turkey really started to up the ante and directly support the AB, um, uh, the AB uh, uh, government uh, in terms of uh, direct support with the TB2 drones, which were able to stifle further advance uh, southwest of Debre Sena. And then obviously those attacks continued. Uh, there's also been some uh, other assets that have been deployed and utilized by the Ethiopian National Defense Forces that have been supplied again by China, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates that has, that were able to stymie the advance of the Tigrayan Defense Forces. But again, 
this conflict is going to evolve uh, back from a strictly uh, the, uh, a conventional operation by the TDF into more of an asymmetrical operation that is also still going to include rather significant elements of con conventional operations. So again, uh, this is going to last a long time, and unfortunately, uh, if you happen to reside in Addis Ababa, um, right now you may be a, a, a vervent, uh, a vehement supporter of the Abiy regime, but uh, as the economy continues to con contract and collapse and uh, inflation and, and lack of uh, resources, uh, where you set one year from now will probably look and you will feel a lot different uh, about this authoritarian regime that is now uh, uh, starting to control the former state of Ethiopia, and that is, again, the warlord of Biamed, and you will feel differently, quite possibly one year from now, than how you feel now. Again, uh, I'm just, uh, this is not biased. I know at times it feels biased, but you cannot argue that's where this regime is heading. Uh, we went from winning the Nobel Peace Prize uh, to in in very very early 2020, we saw the uh, the Abiy regime uh, interacting very closely with Isaiah Safwerki. We've seen multiple trips in January and October, early 2020, that prepped the uh, the the alliance for this operation for this civil war that was going to take place. And again, uh, some miscalculations took place in terms of how long uh, this was going to last and uh, how much opposition, in fact, the Tigrayan reg the Tigray region was going to resist. And uh, that resistance uh, outmeasures anything that was anticipated by uh, the Abiy regime, by the regime of uh, Isaiah Safwerki. But again, we've seen the quickening from uh, what appeared to be uh, progress towards a better democratic nation to a rapid 180-degree turn by the, the Abiy regime towards uh, what, what now appears to be a despotic, anti-democratic uh, government that, that uh, may or may not re remain in power. Again, things are going to contract and constrict uh, as the economy becomes worse and worse and worse. And again, uh, you'll probably see uh, those uh, who support Abiy Ahmed now uh, possibly change their tune uh, as you start to see renewed famine and strife inside of the former state of Ethiopia. But again, uh, we're continuing to watch the military situation right now on the ground. Uh, very fluid uh, situation. We'll have to see what happens near Weldia and south of Weldia. Uh, does the uh, Tigrayan Defense Forces uh, adopt a porcupine strategy in which they go back into the Tigray region and continue with uh, 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 infiltra infiltration attacks into the Amhara region in an asymmetrical war. Do they attempt to defend Weldia? Do they attempt to uh, continue resisting in the Amhara region? Again, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, what transpires in terms of the conflict, but we are paying very close attention to it, and we are monitoring the situation on the ground. Uh, we'll have more to come uh, very, very soon. And again, uh, thanks for tuning in. And again, we will have more content for your consumption uh, very, very soon. Have a good day, everybody.